Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1979, and today we're going to talk about asteroids. Our story starts once again at Atari. Impressed by the Atari VCS, programmer Ed Logg joined Atari and began working in the coin op division. Ed Logg helped develop Super Breakout and worked on an unreleased game named Dirt Bike. Atari senior executive Lyle Raines called Ed Logg into his office to discuss a new project. Raines conceived of a game combining aspects of computer space and space invaders. He brought up another prototype with a giant indestructible asteroid. Raines then came up with the idea for a game where the rocks themselves were destroyed. Ed Logg came up with the idea that shooting the rocks would create smaller rocks and the idea for Asteroids was created. Paul Mancuso joined the development team as the technician, and Howard Delman created the hardware. The game was programmed using a Mose Technology 6502 microprocessor and Quadrascan, a high-resolution vector graphics processor developed by Atari. Ed Logg was much more experienced in vector graphics and felt that vector graphics would allow for more precise aiming. Asteroids features a ship in the middle of several asteroids. The ship can move around the screen with both thrust and inertia, similar to how computer spaces ships worked. The game also features a hyperspace button, allowing the ship to disappear and reappear on a random spot on the screen. Like Space Invaders, the game allows a sense of completion as the asteroids are destroyed and features a heartbeat sound effect. The game also has saucers that will come onto the screen from time to time to shoot at the player. When the prototype was completed, the employees at Atari were eager to play the prototype. As more prototypes were produced and tested, the game proved popular everywhere it was installed. With the addition of initials placed on a list of high scores, competition between players became popular. The game was officially released to arcades in November 1979. It was immediately successful with critics and players. And that is the backstory behind Asteroids, so let's get into the game itself. And here we are in the game. As you can see, this game has significantly less graphics than the last game that we played. This one is Vector Graphics, which I talked about a little bit in the introduction, but basically that means there's lines and nothing to fill them in. Um, it allows for the game to do more with less uh, because there are less graphics. Uh, as you can see, one coin, one play. So let's drop in the coin. It doesn't let me know that I put it in, but it tells me just press start and we'll go in as... I think the second UFO has gone ahead and uh, killed itself. All right, so asteroids. I have quite a bit of experience with this game, actually, um, especially on the computer um, in, in a version that we will probably be talking about later. Um, so yeah, the the idea is pretty simple. Um, destroy the asteroids. You're the ship in the middle. You're the little triangle. Um, I believe in computer space, this one was called the wedge. Uh, we're the wedge. Uh, my strategy is pretty simple. I like to stay in the middle as much as I possibly can. Um, and I particularly like to go for the the smaller ones first. Try to clear the screen uh, before I start going after the bigger ones. Um, as you can hear, the heartbeat is going pretty strong. Wow, I missed all of that, huh? Uh, the flying saucers, they won't shoot straight at you, at least to start. Um, as the game gets harder, as you can continually complete the screens, um, they will get better. They'll get better about hitting you, but, uh, wow, right through it. But right at the start, they're, they're pretty bad about that. Oh, we got a little one and it hit me. Ugh. I didn't really have enough time to, to thrust away anyway. Okay, so, we're on to screen two. Let's move a little bit. Uh, yeah, my strategy has always kind of been to stay in the middle as long as possible. Uh, that way I can see everything that's kind of coming at me. And I have a little bit of time to figure out what I'm doing to get out of the way. Um, I don't like moving around too much because it makes things a little complicated. As you can see, things just kind of um, circle around the screen. No! The little one! Wow. 
All right, that did not work out so well. Uh, but I did um, I did get a high score here. I didn't even use the uh, the get out of my way button. Um, is, what button actually does it? This button? That button. Okay, so that is... Um, you, you set the letter with the uh, emergency hyperspace button. There we go. Okay, there we go. I, I did all right. Those are my real initials, by the way. Um, let's let's head in again. Uh, we will try this uh, uh, probably one or two more times. Uh, the game is pretty basic, as you can see, but um, I'm able to shoot multiple times at once because of the limitations on the graphics uh, that did not exist in uh, other shooters that we have played. So even though it might not look as fun, um, from an initial, you know, standpoint. Oh, that is bad. All right. Um, it might not look as fun, uh, just based on graphics alone. Um, I would argue that this is this is more fun uh, than Galaxian. Um, apparently, th the main strategy to do here is to destroy all but one small one, and then just um, farm the saucers after that. I, I I don't like going for high scores that way, trying to, you know, kind of exploit um, something that the game allowed me to do, as opposed to what the game wanted me to do. Um, Oh. Ah. All right. Well, I made it, but I didn't. I didn't hit the saucer. Those little ones are real, real hard to get. Um, but apparently, there's a spot where you know, if you hang out in the corner, um, then the uh, then the saucers will kind of always show up in the same quadrant, and you can just kind of spam that way until you hit it. Um, but yeah, being able to attack multiple times. Uh, at once, you know, having multiple bullets on the screen from me, um, I would argue is is a, a big improvement, not not just a small one. It, it's a it's a pretty big one for me. Um, but yeah, Asteroids is a game that um, once people get good at it, uh, you can kind of play it. Oh, jeez, man, that that thing's got it out for me. Uh, once you get really, once you get, you know, good at it, you can play it for a long time. Um, which, of course, for arcades, is not what you want. I still haven't even used the emergency button. Are you... I should have used it there. Um, we'll just go with AAA for now. Uh, I felt like that wasn't a good run. Uh, I had a good first life, but nothing good after that. Um, but like I was saying, once you get good at the game, uh, which I'm decent at, um, you can play this game for a long time. Uh, the difficulty spike is not that big. And like I said, um, the big pros, um, they like, uh, farming in this game, as, as we'll get, uh, familiar with as we continue. Uh, the idea is doing something repetitively, um, in order to... Um, get a, a desired result. Uh, do something easy, relatively easy. Just do it over and over and over again in order to increase your score or, um, you know, get something out of it uh, other than necessarily advancement. And um, that is a concept we will explore more later, but this is the first game where... I thought I was going to be fine. Uh, this is the first game where it is um, a widespread strategy to do that. To try to do little. Alright, I got the little one. To try to do little um, in terms of the actual goal um, in order to increase your score. This is the, the game that kind of brought that forward. Um... Of course, it won't be the only one. It won't be the most popular one, either. Um, this is a game that's often forgotten in um, in the history of video games, I feel. Kind of an underrated game, kind of. Ah, jeez. That one was not so good. Um, event I, I need to hit the button just to show off what it does. Um... The emergency get me the hell out of here button. 
There it is. And as you can see, I just spawned in a random spot, and it takes me so long to figure out where I am that it proves to not be useful in tight situations. So um, you really want to save it until you probably don't need it anymore, right? Um, we'll do one more here. Um, yeah, this is not a particularly good run, um, but I I'm doing decently. I'm showing off the game. Yeah, the this difficulty doesn't get too much harder than what it is right now, um, at least in my experience. Um, it's just a matter of... There... Uh, where am I? Oh, I'm right there. No! Damn it. I tried to use the thruster, but uh, I, I didn't get there in time. This is why I don't like the emergency button. I rarely use it. Um, it doesn't even occur to me to use it. I, I just want to get, you know, out of the way. Uh, instead of, you know, randomly warp somewhere else. Uh, also, this is the first time that we have a, um, uh, a screen where, you know, if you go off one side, you end up on the other side of the screen. Um, it, it, it's a weird concept when you really stop and think about it. Just hit something. There we go. It's a weird concept when you think about it, um, and somebody has mapped out what it would take to actually do that, and uh, the result is a donut. That's how you make that happen, is that you are on a donut, uh, where if you go on the, off the top of the screen, you end up on the bottom. If you go off the, the left of the screen, you end up on the right. Um, that shape is actually a donut in three dimensions. It, it's weird to think about it that way. Um, but that's the only way that you can make that happen. Um, overall, though, yeah, this is a fun game. Um, this is something that uh, I, I fully enjoy doing, even though, right, the graphics are, are very minimal, and it makes you think that the game is probably older than it is. Uh, but this game is a game that came out in 1979. You can see the... You can see the the, uh, the copyright at the bottom at all times. Don't let you forget, this was by Atari? No one else? Just Atari? I don't even know what hit me. I didn't see it coming at all. All right, well, that is the game. As I uh, put in my, um, my insurance in there one more time. <laughs> Yeah, it's all hyperspace. That's how you do it. So yeah, the, the first one was the worst, but we did uh, four runs. We did fairly de decently. I'm, I'm hovering right around 5,000 most of the time. Um, so that's Asteroids. And with the game now played, let's talk about uh, kind of my modern take on the game. With the game played, let's talk about how the game holds up. How does it play today? Um, I still feel that the game is fun. Um, but for me, it's fun in short bursts. I went probably longer than I usually do with Asteroids. Uh, for me, it's probably good for a two or three uh, quarters, and then I'm kind of bored of it. It's fun, um, but there's not a lot going on. Um, and with the bullets being so small, it's kind of hard to see what's going on a lot of the time. The UFOs, uh, they eventually start shooting at you a lot, and you kind of have to get into these dogfights, uh, but especially early on, um, it's just you learning how to aim properly and all that kind of stuff, and it takes a lot of practice to get um, the angles and the timing on your shots right, and um, especially when there's a lot of large asteroids on the screen, you don't want to spam the attack button too much because then your screen gets flooded with all those little small asteroids. Um, but the game overall is fun. Like I said, it's something that is good for a few minutes, a few quarters, uh, but ultimately is not a game that I really could sink my teeth into and play for a long time. Um, hence why this is one of the shorter sessions that I've done in these games. Uh, asteroids is fun. Like I said, I have fonder memories of it because I did play it as a kid quite a bit. Um, we'll talk about that version when we get to it. Um, but in, in the arcade, I don't necessarily see this standing out um, compared to a lot of other games on the market. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, playing it now, it, it's basic. It's very simple and basic. And when it comes to shooters, especially space shooters, I feel that there are better options out there. Um, of the three main space shooters that we have played to this point, which are uh, Space Invaders, Galaxian, and Asteroids, I would probably put 
Space Invaders first, and then Asteroids and Galaxian are very close for me, and it would probably depend on uh, the day and my current mood which one I like more. Um, I feel that Asteroids does some things well, and that are improvements on Space Invaders, um, and that are better than Galaxian, but there are other things that Galaxian does better, and there's uh, I would say more things that Space Invaders does right about that gameplay. Um, Asteroids, it's it's fun, but in short bursts. And in terms of the replay value, it's not necessarily something I would go back to unless it was offered to me, right? If it was in front of me, sure, I'll play it. But to go out and seek it is probably not something that I'm going to do. Uh, the graphics, of course, are a step down with the vector graphics. Uh, did it allow for more precise aiming? Yes and no. It was a little more difficult for me to aim, but that had a lot to do with angles as opposed to um, me figuring out where I was actually pointing. Um, it was all about angles and timing, whereas in Space Invaders and uh, and Galaxian, it's more about just lining uh, lining it up and shooting. So I feel that my accuracy was pretty good in Asteroids, uh, even though I missed a lot um, compared to the other games. Um, the sound, I think, is really good. I, I actually do like the sound. It's clearly just um, a version of what was going on in Space Invaders, uh, but I felt that there were... Um, improvements. I do like the sound effects of you destroying the asteroid. That is a good sound effect. Um, and then the gameplay is good. Uh, it, it just feels like a combination of two previous games, which it, it feels like Computer Space and um, and Space Invaders put together. And that's that was the goal from the beginning, and they hit that goal. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make it good gameplay in my mind. It's it's good. It does some things right, but um, it feels like a rehash at some points. Um, and looking from uh, the, the aspect of the future, I, I, of course, th there are a ton of space shooters that are better than this, um, that are more involved, that give you more of a sense of dread that Space Invaders does and uh, makes you feel like you accomplish much more uh, than what Asteroids does. Um, so it's not necessarily a game that I would go back to, like I've said a few times. And that's my modern review. Asteroids would go on to sell over 70,000 units, the most of any Atari arcade game. Atari earned an estimated $150 million from the sales, over $529 million in 2020. Atari had another hit on their hands with Asteroids. We, of course, We'll continue to keep an eye on Atari as we continue. This will be the last time that we talk about Lyle Rains, though. Lyle Rains would continue to work at an executive level at Atari for years, but he would not be as instrumental in the creation of a video game again. As for Ed Logg, it won't be too long before we hear from him again. That is the story of Asteroids. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll play an entirely different kind of game from Atari.